pour l'instant où on a intégré dans le dans le site Frogan, c'est dans ce site. Okay, right. So Right now, so far, the, the images we have are very basic. Now, if I'm a graphic designer, if I'm, a, if I'm an artist, if I'm using editing or if I'm pho using photography, photo editing software, I could very well want to upload my own uh, pictures, not necessarily things like this. So, put simply, can I put anything on my Frogan site? Well, let's get back to this for a second. As you can see, the resources that you can include in a layer, um, there are several resources. They are on the left side. We have image, pixel, path, draw. So these are the geometric shapes we've looked at so far. And text. So, so far we've only played with these geometric shapes, but uh, yes, we can use image images. In order to do this, you need uh, image files. So, to the root directory, we're going to use image to add image files, and uh, they will be. They can then be used in the site. So, you've kindly, kindly provided me some uh, visuals, here they are. So let's um, take the first one. So I'm actually going to take this image and I'm going to put it in right into my directory. The directory where my uh, fragrance site is. Here it is, so let me just uh, simplify the name. <coughs> I'm just going to call it apple.jpg. So, this is what the picture looks like. Um, it's a beautiful appy with a, uh, apple with a wonderful ladybug. So we're now going to introduce it in our site. So let me get back to the table of contents again. Remember. Um, here it is, and I'm now, now going to create an image. So, so res image. Donc, je rajoute un identifiant. Donc, comment je l'appelle? I'm going to add an ID. I'm going to call it res image one, if that's okay with you. Size. What size would you like it to be? 400, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Maybe a little less, 300, 300, 200. Okay, so what do we see? That's, it says we need a file reference. The problem is so far we have not defined a reference, a file, sorry. So, and then you have a lot of optional elements. There is one that is mandatory sometimes, depending on the aspect. So, right now we're stuck. I need to find a file. So, let me go back to the table of contents. And uh, in the file section, I'm actually going to build my file, simply following the instructions. So, I'm going to use the ID once again. An ID, I'm going to call it file1 and the attribute is nature and um, I have three values static dynamic and embedded we're going to use static just for this first test the static this image file uh, apple uh, the apple jpeg here it is Je veux euh, simplement qu'il soit hébergé. I want it to be in the fragrance site root directory. Télécharger pour être présenté. And it will be downloaded to be presented. That's it. So all we need is the name. And that's what I'm going to put here. So there is one important comment I should make at this point. When you talk about a file in a fragrance directory or in a root directory of, 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 of a fragrance site, 
you always need to start like this. So, as you notice at the root, we have the Apple, the Apple file. So, in order for this to work, in the name, you have to put the slash. The slash shows that it's the beginning of your fragrance directory. So, if you wanted to have several pictures, several visuals or images, in, you could create a, a pic um, folder, and you could decide to put your pictures in there. And instead then, what you would do is you would write pic slash. Again, you have to go to the root of the um, fragrance directory. So I'm actually going to keep this because I like my fragrance directory to be well organized. So let's see, is there anything else? Um, I think that's it. So we have a cache attribute which is optional. And I think I, I can now provide the reference. A cache says mandatory. Okay, well, let's put it. You're right. Um, let's test. So, um, I'm not get, getting an error slide, so maybe we have a typo here. Uh, it, maybe it's not mandatory. Um, so that would be a small bug. So, the cache is uh, applicable only if nature is static. So, um, for those of you who develop more sophisticated sites, um, with this you can actually manage the things that you want to be in the cache managed by a fragrance player. If you have a lot of, lot of images that come back in several slides, well, in that case, you could put cache on, and in that case, the player will follow your instructions and place this file in the cache for, the for another slide. So that's really if you're doing site optimization. Um, this is quite interesting. Uh, the fact you don't have to manage the cache uh, um, you, know, you know, in a very tricky way. All you do here is on and that's it. And is the default setting off? Yes. It's uh, If I use my image, this image, several times, it will be loaded by the player every single time. So when you have static uh, images, it's, it makes sense to have uh, to have the, the on to use the on status status, then we have dynamic and embedded. So with dynamic, instead of getting a simple image, you can actually uh, call for a program that's going to generate that image. So this is interesting. Uh, for example, if you're drawing, um, if you're working on a road map, you know with the traffic conditions, you know these ser servers can generate this kind of image as well. Likewise, you can do this here. You can get servers to dynamically uh, generate and and, and introduce. Uh, that information into the Frogans site. So, um, and the third attribute, the third value is embedded. Now, with embedded, you can actually put the content of the Apple JPEG right into. Um, if you're, if you're familiar with Base64 uh, and coding, the content of, of the file can be placed between the uh, between layers, the opening layer and the closing layer, in which case there is no loading time and therefore no latency. In the specification, there is information, additional information on how to use this. Um, so the slide doesn't have the latency, um, but it's a little more um, costly in terms of weight. Uh, uh, the uh, encoding uh, generates 33% more weight, um, which is something you want to keep in mind. So for an FSDL file like this, it's a text block with multiple lines. 
Well, I can show you page 64. It's a long chain of characters, you know, alphabetical uh, characters and a lot of numbers. Um, it's not very easy to edit, you know, with the naked eye. Um, Okay, so I've just introduced the code. Um, apparently, I did nothing wrong. Let's let's do something wrong on purpose. Let me put a wrong reference here. There we go. What does it say? Well, we have an FSD, FSDL validation error. So uh, the validator inside the player is telling me that this file that I'm editing is has a problem. It's not validated because on line 18, column 52, the value file 12 of the file ref attribute has not been utilized previously. And that's true. You cannot use uh, make a reference to something that has not been defined or predefined. So I've prepared a resource, but I've not placed it uh, on the rendering canvas. So let, let's place it on the rendering canvas simply by copying the previous layer and by making some changes. So let's take a look at it at different sizes. Again, I'm putting all here, res draw, I'm, instead I'm going to put res uh, image one. I could have recycled the resource and use res draw. You know, if you have an image, you could use it 14 times, you could define it just, one, just once and, and use it in different layers. And um, so let's leave it here and um, or maybe move it slightly up. There we go. I'm just moving it a, a little bit. And um, let's. Uh, there we go. This image appeared. So all of a sudden, this brings life. And so we have this image, and we have this third layer now, which has been added. So opacity is 100%. We know the opacity rules. You could change it and put 50, for example. Now it is a, a bit more transparent. We could make it less transparent. And again, simply by doing what I just did. So there are interesting additional options to play with your um, images. Um, just getting, going back here to the res image attribute, we have the uh, ID, the size, the file ref, and uh, here we have selection, which means you don't have to use the full image in the resource. So if, for example, if, you, if you're using the, the coordinates, um, using the coordinates, you could select a, only part of the visual, part of the picture, and keep it for the rendering. So some of you may wonder, what's the point? If I want the apple, not the hand, why did I not? I could have done this separately and simply, you know, edited the picture before. Well, the reason is that instead of containing one thing, an image has difficult graphic components. Um, I'll show you um, a slide which has been uh, developed by slides, by, by, uh, developed by, by users where in one image you have several numbers, you know, numbers that were uh, used, created or designed with a specific software, and they, 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 they upload it once, and they, 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 they then distributed the numbers. Uh, so instead of loading the picture 10 times, uh, you load it only once, so it really ac accelerates the loading time of uh, the slide, and in terms of it's also much easier to maintain. So, then we have aspect. Aspect is optional. The default setting is base. It's the first one. And uh, let's play a little bit with the, uh, with the aspect. Where do we put it? Um, 
I'll put it right after file ref. So aspect spread. Let's see what we get now. Okay. The aspect attribute is not allowed in the layer element. It's interesting. Okay. Interesting. It, I placed it just anywhere. And instead of placing it in the image, I placed it in the layer, which I did not do on purpose. The validator FSDL validator is watching me and is telling me that it should be somewhere else. Let's see if it works now. Okay. Now it is working. So, um, let's, um, let me just remove it so you can see what happened. See? It, look at the, did you see the adjustment? The width? Let me do one, something else. For example, For example, this image has a size of 500. What happens? It moves to the right. That's a question of alignment. If I reintroduce the spread, what happens? There we go. Now we have it covering the full um, width. The size being right here. So now, okay, so this is how you can change the proportions of uh, an image. That is correct. So you can do all kinds of things. You can do echo. So here we have the same visual, which is repeated several times. Um, you can make adjustments. Uh, for example, if I put minus 100, that's uh, my adjustment value. You can see that the picture is moved to the left. So you can really play uh, in order to position it exactly where you want it to be. So, let's... Let's uh, come back to where we were. Que dire d'autres sur cet attribut là? Je regarde. Let's see. Alors, I'm going to tell you about the attribute. Un autre mode qui est l'effet, le mode tile. On va faire des motifs avec beaucoup de motifs répétés. You have the tile mode. Tile you can use as well. So, if you're a developer, please feel free to give it a try and play with the tool. And with that, I think we've covered the image uh, elements. Now, earlier on you showed me something interesting. Um, what happens when you use transparent visuals? I can't remember. I think it's this one. This one here is transparent. So let me put this uh, in my directory. I can put it right into my pick directory. I'll call it world. And when I open it up, um, as you can see, it's pretty transparent on the edges. Oh, we can't really see that well. Um, Bon, alors les gens vont, doivent vous croire sur parole. Voilà. Non, par contre, on va essayer de le voir. On okay, va well, you know what, that's fine, that's fine. Appeler, au lieu d'appeler l'image Apple... Instead of calling the Apple image, let's, let's change it by world. Replace Apple by world. And the PNG extension. Et là, on voit bien, and plus clair, there we go. Que oui. en fait, As you can see, it bien is bien transparent bien. on the edges. De façon transparente. Alors du coup, d'ailleurs, on peut très bien finalement se dire, mais au fond, ça aurait été tellement mieux d'avoir ce monde à la place de cette énorme ellipse. It would have been so much better to have this world instead of this large ellipse. And you're right. So on peut l'attendre assez facilement. I think the transformation is pretty easy to make. So let's go to layer one. So this is an XML comment, and et puis en même temps. Je vais quand même augmenter un petit peu la taille. Let me also increase this size. Je vais mettre 640. Let me put 640, 480. Image dans sa plus grande taille possible. That way we can make the image as large as possible. Et je vais enlever le premier layer. And I've removed the first layer. So. Et je recharge. Que vois-je Une image qui est coupée. What we have is this image which is trimmed, which is cut. 
qui se trompe, mais là, ça va être le cas. So, generally, the operator makes mistakes. Um, so, what we have here is a very large image. Uh, mais je l'ai positionné n'importe comment. But it's not positioned very well. Le plus favorable. Donc, je vais le remettre en fait. So, let me now replace it. Parce que c'était dans le coin en bas à gauche. Eh bien, je vais mettre le left. Bas à gauche, le plus en bas à gauche possible. Replace it as far as I can to the left bottom. Et voilà. There we go. Ça se passe mieux. Alors, on voit rien. Now it's much better. Je vais être obligé de mettre un autre fond pour qu'on voit un peu ce qui se passe. <coughs> ah, si vous voyez bien. Can everybody see? Il est, euh, on voit quand on passe sur les autres objets. As on vient de se faire une terre énorme. Above other objects. Avec, euh, We've just... <coughs> created this beautiful plant. So, with this, you can create all kinds of shapes, not just geographical, uh, geological shapes or images. You can create special effects like transparency on the edges. Soit soit des effets soit des effets de transparence dégradés. You can have, comme on l'a vu tout à l'heure, on peut aussi imaginer different different shades in your colors. You can create transparency, full transparency, or semi-transparency. On voit que là, on voit un peu, on voit un petit peu à travers la terre. Et donc on va pouvoir utiliser. You can see slightly through the planet here. Could you reverse the poles on this uh, view of the globe? Okay, I know what you have in mind. I think this should be possible. If I take a look, so here, I go back to the layer element. So you've dropped your image on a layer, and it's by playing on the layer element that you can bring changes to the image which is displayed in the slide. Yes, I'm not going to modify the slide, but when I put it in the rendering canvas, I introduce a flip on the layer. So I have flip equals, and there you can select X dear or Y dear, and I don't know this by heart, so this is not exactly what you wanted. No, but I quite like it anyway. And if you want to turn the the map upside down, it's a Y dear. Okay. So you see the Earth upside down. Et euh, c'est l'occasion d'ailleurs euh, de montrer. So you have all these uh, optional effects that can help you. So if I reduce the size of the image to obtain the effect, I wanted to show you if I blur it here. Et là, les valeurs. So all these effects are additive, I mean you can add them one to another, so here I blur 20 pixel plus a radius of 20 pixels and what do I get? This kind of blurry semi-transparent thing, that's a blur that's kind of powerful Yes, because it's a 20 pixel blur, so maybe I want to reduce it to 4. But all these graphic effects are made on the user's workstation, from the user's workstation, and from a set of very simple image elements which are available. You can vary the, the rendering on the rendering canvas. So, there are filters you can, ha you can add and you have the filter here which is available in this uh, alpha version of the Frogan's Player to add light and contrast. Okay, so we need to define the filter and then apply it on the layer. So, 
even if I've saved I'm going back to this because it's simpler this is not the one I wanted so I wanted to save this part and I wanted to come back to apple dot gpeg and I should get this one okay so I have a large picture yes and we can no longer see, see the other layer no because it was defined in the front <coughs> so by just reversing the order of the layers I can see it reappearing here but you might tell me okay but I can recycle my ellipse and say <coughs> and I place my ellipse here so let's see okay my ellipse is at the top and now you need to trust me I'm going to do that faster So this blue layer, I'm slightly disappointed though because I thought I would have a slightly larger image, but anyway, I'm going to do that in a rough way, but you'll understand me if I have a cutout here with an opacity of 100, then I should be able to, oh sorry, cut out not great as you can see it's probably not cut out I wanted I wanted inter so it's almost perfect I wanted it to be well aligned I don't have time to do that but uh, as you can see by combining several layers you can from a square image and from a few lines of text like here you can start building things which have a certain value from a graphic perspective okay so text you gave us the perfect transition and if I may I'll introduce a filter I'll do that in a couple of seconds if you don't mind Et donc, je vais filtrer simplement cette image-là que je, que je viens d'inclure. Je vais la filtrer. So this image that I just included, I'm going to filter it before it's included in the layer. So that's the inclusion of the uh, image. So I define a filter now, and I use these documentation. So I have a filter ID. set filter so we have this convention in place but you could use any naming we have this but you could call it uh, blur, contrast the apple, whatever negative and I'll put a negative filter that will reverse the colors on the image. So now what happened? Nothing, because I defined the filter, but I've not applied the layer to the, the filter to the layer. Je vais rajouter simplement ici. Alors dans l'ordre, bon, je vais improviser l'ordre. So I'm going to improvise with the order. I put in filter ref plus set filter 1, which is the name of my filter. Donc, que -il se passer? Ah, la photo. And what happens? Guess what? The picture has changed color. And all of a sudden it becomes more scary. Yes, but these filters can accumulate. You can use seven filters. You can define six steps in filtering process. And if I was to... 
qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire On peut par exemple éclaircir un petit peu la pomme. Ça peut être pas mal de l'éclaircir. For the apple, maybe we want the apple to be slightly more clear with a 50% layer level. And I'm going to shortcut or bypass the second filter. So you see that the apple, so on the screen it's very bright but already, but now it's even brighter. And of course, once the apple is quite bright and clear, you say that you want to reverse everything and then you get a very dark apple. So all this can combine, there are uh, very interesting effects called Lumaki effects meaning that you can introduce transparency in the image. At the moment I have no transparency, but if I enter a filter effect, Lumaki or Chroma Key. Luma Key is a filter for light, and Chroma Key is to work on color. So. Emmanuel, give me one color. Okay, I feared that. Okay, it's going to work, don't worry. We'll try and eliminate a color from the picture thanks to the chroma key effect with a tolerance of 10. And do you remember the color of the apple? It was red. So we'll remove the red color, the true red color. So, what did you see? It was slightly green and red. I have red or blue. So let's try and eliminate the red. I increased the tolerance and something horrible is going to happen. See, I've eliminated the red in the picture and you can see through this is the special effect in cinema. If you want to stand before blue screen and use this type of filters, you can make the blue curtain disappear and end up in front of your slide without any special effects but this code line. So all these combinations are possible.